okay now the end of the month of january and the end of the series of dhamma talks may you everyone settle down and uh, be prepared for the talk and give the consent with three times sadhu 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 sad namo tasse bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas namo tasse bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas namo tasse bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas tenai ma gandhiya sapurise bhajissasi yato twang ma gandhiya sapurise bhajissasi tato twang ma gandhiya dhammam sossasi tato twang ma gandhiya dhammam dhammam patibhajissasi yato twang ma gandhiya dhammam dhammam patibhajissasi tato twang ma gandhiya samam eva nyassasi samam dakkasi ti ti Dear Venerable <coughs> Sirs, Dhamma Prince, this is a kind of a, uh, concluding, uh, conclusive remarks the Buddha made towards the Mahagandhya and uh, this is the, the sap or the crux of the teaching of the Buddha after the, the effective dialogue between the Mahagandhya and the Buddha. At the beginning, it appeared like very arrogant and uh, opposite each other like. But uh, Buddha took enough time and to talk with him, and lucky enough, the Mahagandhya also was happy to face the situation directly with the Buddha. And then, as we concluded, even for a king, those who are believed to be fully developed and full-fledged in the sensuous pleasure and uh, having all the indulgence and sensuous gratification, indulgence, and as far as they are not uh, satisfied with it, as far as they are thirsty, as far as they have this fever, their mind never be introvert and they will never see peace, a sustainable peace, and uh, because they have this thirsty. <clears throat> Whatever they got never help them to be satiable. And uh, so therefore, uh, whatever the progress, or whatever the productivity, whatever the uh, creativity they have, even if it is fulfilled, they are completely <clears throat> wandering or bewildered. And Mahagandhi is agreeing with that at this time. And then instead, the Buddha, he says, if someone knowing the insatiable nature of the sensuous pleasure, and uh, even though you expect <clears throat> by the materialistic gain and luxuries and kind of thing, they are always extrovert. So always uh, unappeasing. And knowing that, what about <clears throat> renouncing them? So this is a kind of a radical kind of a reflection. That, <clears throat> that radical reflection is known as Yon Somanishikara. You think the root cause and you can understand the suffering <clears throat> happening within and the appeasement happening within, but the world is bewildered. They are seeking happiness in materiality and external world. And as far as they are having that idea and still not happy, not enough, they will never look in, inward. That is, they are deprived of that kind of a happiness and contentment. Instead, once you renounced, then you can understand the, the techniques, ways and means you would have, you'd have, you'd have, you'd have taken to get rid of this uh, direct sensuous pleasure related with your senses, i.e. with the visual objects, the ear with the 
sounds and the nose with the smell, the tongue with the tastes and the body with the tactile sensation and the mind with mind object or daydreaming, fantasizing, all the kind of thing. They harbor, they hold the perception of sense pleasure you indulged or you aspired. You look forward for the uh, pleasure and even you renounce the world, they are chasing behind you. They are the one we call obsessional kind of defilements. And they are being categorically recognized as nivaranas or the uh, hindrances to your clear-cut understanding. They are five in number. And when that happened to be, when that happened to face to face it, you are in utter trouble. That is what we call renounced kind of suffering. At household you have enough suffering and a lot of agents and a lot of companies and a lot of internet companies come and say this is the only way to do this and that but not a single person have experienced such a thing and they are ever searching like a, a leper or a person with a skin disease they are always burning the same skin and uh, scratching it and it's ever become sore you will become oozing and spreading. But instead when you come in, if you, sorry, if you renounce and observe the obsessional kind of defilements, then only you can see while you are grabbing, while you are accumulating, while you are uh, gratifying, it's like a, a skin disease, uh, like a skin a situation, but whenever you try to get rid of that, they start chasing behind you. So that is called renounced kind of suffering. So we mendicants, we recluse, and we residential retreatants, we talk each other because we somehow the other temporary or permanently manage to get rid of this uh, household kind of suffering. And then when you are obsessed with the obsessional kind of thing, there are some, some completely different sets of rules a different way of uh, restraint and they are usually known as spiritual. They are normally used as uh, religious and when they are doing it, uh, everyone, each and everyone consider these five hindrances as my personal. They never think it's a common thing. They never think it is an endowment of our human life. They personally have agenda how to get rid of this sensuous desire, how to get rid of this hatred and the uh, unsatisfied or uh, dislike, and how to get rid of this sloth and topper, how to get rid of this uh, hankering behind the past and regretting and future planning, and how to get rid of this uh, entertaining of doubts. And everyone considers this as a personal threat. But not a single person born free of this obsessional. So they have to have a common, we have to have a common uh, effort. We have to have a, a gathering together and talk each other and to understand this Nivaranas, we are very happy to say it is my you know, obsessional, it's my distraction kind of thing. But there is no such Nivarana, it's a very common disease. And the day you understand the only way out of this nivarana or obsessional kind of defilement is to focus your attention on a materialistic thing, rupa dhamma. And unless otherwise you focus to something, you cannot do away with nivarana. So we have to think about what is the one particular single object or pivotal point or the benchmark or the assembly ground for us to do away with the household suffering and the renunciated kind of suffering. Geya Sita Domanasa and Nekama Sita Domanasa in Pali. So, even though you all have lockdown and chased away from the Jana Grove, I hope 
then would have experienced some occasions whereby you are sure my mind is with the in-breath and out-breath, or mind is with the rising and falling, or mind is with the sitting uh, experience, or maybe in walking up and down, or when you are brushing teeth, whatever it may be. So at that moment, you would have experienced sometimes knowingly or unknowingly the household kind and the renunciated kind is gone, your mind is focused to that. And when that happens, you can understand how difficult to maintain that alignment, how to maintain that pure thought moment. But it is not a matter of understanding that pure thought moment. You will see, if you are born bright, it's an endowment, your birthright. You are born with it. So you, when you are assimilating your own ways and means, you can see sometimes, if you are really focused and really geared, really avenued, uh, strategically you can maintain few thought moments, few <coughs> seconds, few minutes in the single object. So when that happens, if you are, if you are skillful, enough, skillful enough to understand the uh, in the deduced, deductive knowledge and inferential knowledge, at that moment I am away from the household suffering and the household kind of worries and the renunciated kind of worries, then you will see the potential. But even though you are skillful in avenuing and focusing and kind of thing, the body and the mind is making so much of impediments so much of directed dispositions, so much of hidden uh, agendas happening in your mind. And earlier you thought that uh, five hindrances are the main culprit and this is me and this is mine. But you can see, even if it is done away with that, there are some another layer under the carpet, some defilements. So they also... If you are going to take it as a, an enemy, if you become depressed, you can discourage and worry, that is the defilement. Instead, if you get the proper instruction and go, even though you've done away with the transgressional kind of defilements, even you have a skillful and done away with the obsessional, there is another layer. And that very understanding, I am face to face with that substrata or the <coughs> basement, that itself is a great thing. Don't declare war against it. So we, towards the end of the yesterday's discourse, we try to, we try to put it in a a fourfold method, sometimes you clearly know, now I am in the primary object, say, so to say, for an example, sitting and I know I am in the breath, in breath, not the out breath, out breath, not the in breath, like very sharp. So sometimes you can see, I can somehow the other manage with the in breath and out breath, but I feel some pain, I feel some, I hear some sounds. I feel some inner thoughts happening in the background of your mind or foreground in your mind and still you can be aware my main thing is the primary object but I am not completely free of other distractions but some of the other managing as if you are driving in a traffic jam you are not going to have any accident or kind of thing you just understand it's a traffic jam you can't have the desired speed. And after a while you can understand they are gone again. You can come back either to primary object or the third, third option. You are utterly taken. Taken you for a ride. You are completely bogged down in your thought or pain or sounds. And that is also, that is also whenever you are in in-breath, if you know you are not out-breath. I mean in-breath, I am not in out-breath. And whenever you are in outbreath, you know I am in outbreath, not in the inbreath like. If you know this is not my primary object, but I am utterly uh, taken you for, taken for a ride, I am in 
secondary object i am bewildered i am my unmindful so that is a still if you are not worrying if you are uh, ready to experience it without getting feverish without giving shaken without become allergic and without self cursing without finding fault with others that is greatest that easily you can have in a group sittings group walking and meditation and uh, there are some cases it's not a successful meditation as such it is not a successful sitting as such or walking as such because you know uh, you are not at home but still but still if you can report it like that i knew about 5 10 minutes i would dreaming and fantasizing and thinking and bewildered oh my excruciating kind of pain left leg is like a uh, torturing or oh, the sounds sounds are hearing and you can understand the sound is not the thought thought is not the pain pain is not the primary object so you can clearly indicate this is my distraction and the reporting is not a defilement it is not a bad thing so this third option only for the vipassana yogis they can understand i am not at home and whenever you become familiar with that kind of a bewildered of the track kind of experience when the mind calm down the instruction is being under such distracted positions can you still look at your sitting body can you still look at the in breath and out breath in an intervals occasionally the day you see it you will see this is the way of we call see through look through the distraction and still you can see the uh, primary object as if while you are in a primary object you can see distractions like so when the last option happen still if you are so calm if you are so collected and uh, contented and you can see still the breath is calming down or you are if you are based based upon the rising and it's calming down because the main thing is not to worry when such a thing happen and buddha is giving that kind of not of course in this four fold method and say after that the buddha is have a exclamation or utterance telling arogya parama labha nibbana parama sukha the, the highest gain is the health of course in corona situation yes and whenever you have that appeasement or nibbana there is no other pleasure as such not in the luxuries not in the sensuous pleasure kind of thing and then the magandeya was utterly happy with the buddha oh this is a wonderful exclamation this exactly we find in our scripts arogya parla parma labha nibbana parama sukham then the buddha is asking what do you mean by health then he uh, touches hands and the body he says i am very happy i am healthy here that is what i call the health then buddha is telling this is the way you people measure you have the script in your body in your holy script but you read only the materialistic part you are you are happy with your body and strong and healthy but you never consider the the health of your mind so therefore you people interpret health as your bodily health as bodily strength or we can say beautification and body building and uh, the iron man or beautiful woman and that is the bloody foolish world today they are going for the outer appearance and they are making advertisements It's endless because they know each and every one uh, will succumb to this situation so the hindu buddha says you people never see the nibbana because your perspective is wrong you know the scripts you you know the mantra and you don't know how you don't you don't understand it therefore sorry whatever the 
faith you have whatever the learning you have whatever the uh, desire you have for your spiritual life and uh, whatever the logical deduction you have in your argumentation and whatever the belief never leading to the appeasement and it's a very strong very sharp and when that happens Magandhya says oh I understand venerable recluse uh, Gautama please please let me know your way of teaching because I am a devoted person I know scripts by hearsay and uh, I like it myself I know this is the best like and I have my argumentation deductive thinking and I have my belief but now I feel the way you are revealing it is very vivid Sadhava please 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 teach me so now you can see how the the turning point and it is uh, depicted in this particular sutta in a very very organic way very very aesthetic way how it happens so it is not a premeditated thing in the discussion itself it's happening of course it is we call discourse in the discussion it's happening and then the buddha says imagine a born blind person I think that I have to go to sometimes to the society, so therefore I must have, I must wear the proper suit, proper attire. And then he gave a person some money and says, "Please make me uh, adorn with the proper clothing." But the person who has taken money is cheating him. He is giving a very dirty cloth, used one, and says, "This is the best in the society." So be happy and go to the people so the the born blind go to the people thinking that he is very adorned with uh, and uh, happy with the new clothing and when you go there the other people can understand the blind person is coming with uh, such a dirty second hand clothing but uh, he do not know uh, hardly any person can convince him you have the desire to go to the forest, you know, go to the society in the decent clothing, attire, but you are not presently uh, with that, that kind of thing. How can, I, how can I convince you? Because he can't verify that. The best thing is to take him to an eye doctor or eye surgery and give sometimes very harsh treatments according to the time period they have the uh, acute acupuncture therapy, acupressure therapy, and it was available at that time. You had to pierce some needles, and uh, the, you can't convince the, the blind, born blind, you have to say, hey darling, you have to, you have, to have your own suffering, you have to undergo these uh, the treatments. And imagine that particular person managed uh, to take it, or grant and underwent the surgery and soon he opened, soon he see things as they are. What will happen to his new clothing, new attire? And he can understand that even though I have, even though I spend money, even though I have the desire to go to the decent, uh, the crowd in the decent distinct, this is what happened. So likewise you people believing so much of wrong beliefs. You have a so much of wrong way of argumenting, deductive knowledge and the inferential knowledge. You have so much of theory understanding. You are so dedicated and you are so faithful. I am sorry. You can't see what is happening. But the only thing is there should have an eye surgeon to open the eye, remove your blindness and that is how you have to see things as they are. Otherwise, a lot of fabrications. I mean, a lot of storytelling, a lot of magics, a lot of curvy roads. But the direct path or see things as they are, they are under your very nose. There are no so long, 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 long formulas. There are no mantras. There are no mystics. But 
people they are happy with their old clothings they they greased and soiled and dirty and they are adjusting and adorning and kind of thing but they are born blind so therefore you, the buddha says i'm sorry you have all the qualities you have paid everything that you will never go then again the uh, of course both the present the other side of the story and whenever person is a born blind person become eyed a visual person what a kind of a opening he is going to have and uh, look at the problem from the complete different point of view so if i am to just take a uh, off road uh who pandita sayado is giving a very 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 dramatic very wonderful kind of explanation the buddha to be when he was practicing in very ardent and very self modification kind there were five disciples they were so happy because this the bodhisatta the buddha to be so ardent practicing without eating without bathing and all kind of thing and they all were happy but the bodhisattva knew this is not the path so it happened uh, due to the talking about the middle path in a musician then he decided to have a little uh, give a little basic needs to the body and uh, get the support of the body and then have a middle path and then uh, while he was practicing all five left thinking he is so luxurious and he started eating and there he is not more made up his mind for the understanding and therefore they left so then the buddha himself uh, enlightened and then he thought to whom i should can communicate at beginning of course he refused he, he, he denied not to talk because the whole world is blind so then uh, due to the invitation Uh, there are maybe some people with little blindness and little dust on their mind and then the buddha took step so i am uh, going to repeat little bit so after the uh, the buddha selected the way of life middle path the five attendants they went off but after a contemplation the buddha again thought they are the only people can understand what i am going to say so when the buddha walked weeks to these five disciples in the saranat from the buddha gaya and when they are seeing the buddha they thought now still he needs our support because he is coming to the princely family he can't live without assistance and the the other workers so i we are not going to treat him uh, as a real recluse but with that idea they never they never they never happy to listen to the buddha one time two time three times but the ask please listen to me he told what to listen because you are a person now go for luxuries and therefore how can the dhamma come from you earlier you were hard and practitioner like then the buddha then uh, change the technique and ask have i ever bragged before telling that i have even see a light or lightness then each other look at their own face again and again they told this gotama the recluse is not bragging he never told that he having any kind of a knowledge or superhuman powers or nothing but now he says please listen so then buddha asks why i did not mention you that i see a light i see the lightness because i did not see today why i am telling you please listen because i see and that make a kind of an opening and then the buddha uttered the dhamma chakka patana sutta and they are venerable kondanya the elder he says uh, the he see through see things as the second day venerable vappa venerable vappa the buddha took him and uh, give a special guided meditation the second in the line and at the towards the end of his life the vappa had this exclamation 
Passati passo passantang a passanto a passati, na passantang na passanti, passanto cha na passati. He says eight person can see other eight people and he can see blind people also. He can see this person can see, but this, these people they can't see because they are blind. But the blind person, they can't discriminate the seer as well as the blind person. And he do not know who can explain you who is eyed person. So therefore he don't know where to look into. So before the Dhamma, we were like blind and we don't know who is eyed, who has a normal eye, who is not having. So we can't discriminate. But, but once you become eyed person, you can understand the blind person versus the, the versus the eyed person. So likewise, this opening, or unless otherwise such an opening happened, we are so arrogant, we are so adamant, we are so crooked, we are so perverted. So Dhamma never come up to you. Because you think you know. You know your deductive thinking is the way. You think you what you heard is the truth. And you think your dedication is the utmost in the world. And you think your faith is the best. But the Buddha says all five have the same disadvantage. The two same disadvantages. What you selected as good, what you select part you selected as good may not carry the truth. What you rejected as this is not my faith, this is not my liking, this is not what I heard in the book, this is not my deductive thinking and faith or view may carry the truth. So that change is the most important, most important turning point. So therefore, eyed person and the blind person the eyed person at least can understand the another eyed person. So that change, here the Buddha is, that surgery, here the Buddha is doing for Magandhi. Then Magandhi was pleading. Earlier he says, the Bunahu Samano Gautamo, the recluse Samano Gautama is a destroyer of the growth. I am not hesitant to tell him to the face. And accordingly, he, he told like that. And he proved, because you are restraining eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and therefore that is what I am telling you are a destroyer. Now he says, Venerable, you know, you are qualified, you, are poten- you have the potential, please stay. Then the Buddha says, if you, are, if you are so bent, if you are so prepared, if you are so humble yourself, if you are so innocent, if you have this beginner's mind, Please find, please associate true people. Please associate noble people. Teneya magandhya sappuriswam pappuriso bajissasi. So that is the way. You have to associate a height person. All the other blind, leading blind is the world. So therefore, uh, your prime duty it is not an enlightened duty. It is not a learned person duty. Your duty is the common sense. Those who are living in the noble way, what they say, the same thing he is practicing. What he is practicing, he is telling others. Not brainwashing. Not uh, the one thing in the daytime and one thing in the night time. So specifically when we, are, when we become the co-practitioners, we can see each other. We are living together, we are sitting together, we are walking together. There you can understand the, how the dedication so, of course, in the distance education and virtual retreats, it may be not so. But whenever such a thing happens, the prime important thing is they have the true people. So, in early part of my life, I thought there are no such people. But the whole world is blind following the blind, specifically when I am learning science in the, you know, in the schools. I had it, but I don't know how to express at that time. So I found this is something wrong. Because I am from a middle class, I am a farming family, and I know 
uh, interaction with the nature and the, all the kind of thing. But they are talking completely nonsense. They are bringing everything from the West. They are bringing everything from the unknown people and pouring. Not that I can accommodate, not that I can remember them, not that I can answer the questions. But I felt, and therefore I had something sarcastic about this bloody education, this is bloody uh, the, uh, linear education, but I was not aware what is, the, what is the alternative. So simply I had, everyone is mad. And uh, uh, luckily or unlucky enough, I managed to go to university and all the kind of, therefore I had so much of proud, I was proud. I think others are foolish. Because they are, whatever they are talking and no, no essence. And so I was arguing and uh, way forward and uh, arrogant like Magandhya. So Venerable Dhammika only told you, okay, okay, that you are good, but you are an utter fool. Your nation, Sri Lanka, is an utter fool. Because they don't know the mindfulness, the simple action. Simple action of see things as they are. Leave it aside, the thinking, think, see as they are. Just bear attention. No one believes that bear attention is the key. Because there are no, no, no role models, no example. So Venerable Dhammika was telling me, this is the way it happens, some Zen masters are there, they are like that, and some people I have seen, they are not worrying about much, they are worrying about the present moment. And I, I, I felt it, but we, never, we have been not taught like that. So he took three, four years walking with me, climbing tree, mountains and go to the centers and showing me the books and kind of thing. He told the first and foremost thing. I don't know, that made the change. And still I continued uh, education and I thought, when can I have this kind of a full time, uh, be mindful. So even if, uh, when I come to the Nisarnavani and becoming a monk, I was not aware about this monastic court, well, what are the suttas, nothing, but just be here and now. But lucky enough, it was really fitting into the, this atmosphere, and when I come to the Venerable Jnana Ramateru, he told, yes, you read the, you read the suttas, they are in Singhala and Pali, and read the Manjimanikai. Vedavan Jnananda also told, I have no time for your personal time to give, but if you read, if you have a question, please come and me. The I find, I look at the Tipitaka only through the mindfulness. Maybe I am fanatic. So when that happens, you see that uh, more than what you expect, there are uh, true people. There are uh, noble people. But if you go to the fish market, if you go to the supermarket and if you go to the carnival and search for the search for true people, that is your foolishness. That is your utter the the blinded with the with the blinkers. But there are a lot of occasions where you can see people with simple living and high thinking. And when they are, they are not propagating or telling the single is Buddhism and nothing. They simply be here and now. And I was so happy about the Veluana Dhamma group, very little group. And they are having one hour sitting in the Wednesday and one hour sitting in the, uh, one hour talk in the Sunday. And they are very simple group. I participated three years directly without doing a job, without marrying without telling anyone that I am meditating and continue with. So then only I can understand there is such a treasure. There are simple people on the earth. They are not advertising them. And that is the that's a real, real. Others are psychopaths. Utter psychopaths. And they are asking you, they are giving this and that and chocolates and the, all the kind of thing, sweets and everything, but they are brainwashing. It can't help because they are like Magandhya. They say that restraining and mindfulness and things. No, oh, no, no, that cannot be. It must be with uh, sugar coating and all the kind of camouflage. And people are very happy with that. So it is not the mistake of the master. If you select the wrong way. 
So likewise, the association with the good, true people, Tehne Ma Gandhiya Sapurthe Bajishasi, Yato Khotva Ma Gandhiya Sapurthe Bajishasi, Tato Tva Ma Gandhiya Dhammang Sossasi. If you are associating with the true person, you are bound to listen to the Dhamma, the things as they are, the truth. It is not so scared, not as so scared to find, it is available. When you are taking the in-breath, you know you are in the in-breath. When you are in the present moment, you know in the present moment, did need no any PhD or diploma in science, Buddhist education, nothing. It is not necessary to be a born Buddhist. It is not necessary to be a forest monk. So Dhamma is there. And in the uh, Zen method it is called Tao. The natural way. That is a common sense. And the present day is everything is mixed up with. And making big formulas. And cults. And rituals. To make the simple thing complicated this is so simple unbelievable that is what i heard in 1978 79 it's so simple unbelievable so therefore dhamma is there when i was in panditarama and Saida was giving and i was so happy because he never talked nonsense and there was a one lady doctor came from canada and she says bante the people says that uh, Dhamma is so scared to find, uh, the difficult to find, and you have to do this and that. But I don't know. The Dhamma came alone my way. I am born in Canada, and that is how I came to you. If you are a simple person, if you know how to find a true person, Dhamma is coming. It is not locked under a uh, cupboard and you have to pay for that. And uh, in uh, Sri Lanka we have this Tipitaka, that means 50 odd number of books uh, giving the three baskets. And these books never claim rights are reserved. All the other bullshit books, everyone in the first page, they say right reserved. Don't copy don't electronically or so and so you copy, if it is so you are being sued. Because it carries nonsense. The treasure, everything, the Buddha, Buddha never make it, made it a right reserve. The most important thing. So that, it, that is the way Dhamma. But even the monks in Sri Lanka never read Tipitaka. They read all the other books. I, I mean, reading is good, no problem. But uh, it is such a such a free thing to get it. So that you, if, whenever you associate the true people, Dhamman Sosasi. and that is your main, uh, the, your main common sense must be to see true people. And for that, you have to be down to earth. You have to be simple. You have to be. Uh, honest you have to be uh, humble humble is the best word and then the, the true people you can easily associate with the uh, other true people and then they will that you can hear Dhamma because they are telling and that is your way is put that into practice after listening to the Buddha the Magandhi is asking Bhante I feel you have potential you can take me, you can let me to see the Nibbana. I am a very learned person. I have all the other uh, religious cap- characteristics, but I feel. So that is the way you feel like not believing with the unrooted kind of a faith. You have the, you have the desire to put into practice. That's called uh, Kusala Chanda, the put into practice. Dhamma Anu Dhamma Patipati. So we, few people, and midst of this all the COVID problems and midst of the, all the other family pro- members in trouble and uh, economic situation, uh, we try to put uh, mindfulness even while we are brushing our teeth, even when we, while we are eating, even when we are taking a bath, even someone is finding fault with you. Even you find fault with others and you are angry. Still you can put into practice. 
for that of course Chana Grove is good but today you all have been chased away because of this lockdown and you are not deprived of anything you can put everywhere so like I put into practice first you have to understand how to make it a hobby like how to make it a uh, sustainable life but the, all the other the falsified people make so much of rituals so much of taboos so much of bottlenecks and that is the way they get a distance from the teacher and the disciple but when you are practicing you have no distance you are you know when you are seeing you know you are seeing when you are hearing you know you are hearing when you are smelling you know smelling no time gap under your very nose so likewise the dhammanu dhamma patipada dhammanu dhamma patipatti and uh, when it is happening when each and every moment you i will reduce into the mindfulness and then you yourself know you yourself see so therefore i remember one day i made this statement the if you are a buddhist or if you are a follower of the buddha and follow dhamma meditation is the only thing or other way i would say if you are not meditating still in the in the common colloquial term you are a person without head you are a dead body or headless person whenever you are meditating it must be vipassana maybe i am biased and whenever it is vipassana just simple be at attention so people that day also i can remember some were not happy telling that whole buddhism whole gravity or everything you are going to reduce to the be at attention and the mindfulness i have said yes it's the beginning when it's happening it is leading so likewise the buddha says whenever you put into practice that is the only point please keep it in your mind that's the only point you can verify others big theories and formulas and mantras you can chant very very charming but not verifiable ultimately you are wasting your time like a blind person misled by another uh, fool by selling a dirty cloth so likewise the samang eva nyassasi samang eva dakkasi you can see and that very thing you can't explain that very thing you are not <coughs> respecting that is why you can't write a proper meditation experience interview report you are talking cock and bull stories and lucky enough there was a very young person in the retreat and there were some young people sending their reports they are so sharp they are short to the point short and sweet no nonsense so by listening i can say whether it's an elderly person or young person they are they are writing methods and expressions are so much difference i am not telling it is too late i am telling never too late so therefore it's your own experience the verifiable or the verifiability it is a, it's very scientific i am talking On, only thing is he's an introvert and whenever that kind of a verify samang eva dakkasi samang eva pasisasi then buddha says you know this is a disease and this is a tumor and this is a dart that you have paid for so far just like a dirty cloth and whenever you see only the recovery start otherwise you are adoring or garland like if you are accepting the diseases turmoil and the uh, dart then you are succumb to that situation so therefore you have to understand you have to diagnose what is happening so therefore knowing when the mind is with sickness or when the mind is with nivarana so nivar mind is with uh, subtle defilements that is the greatest don't worry about this is my mistake or I, I, who is responsible for that and how can i uh, why not i uh, i am given with the basic condition without these defilements and kind of thing that means you are not there at all diagnosing it so this diagnosis of the available disease or tumor or a dart is the personality 
You have to develop that personality. At the beginning, of course, you don't have. That's why you must have the faith. That's why we must have morality. And then on top of that, the mindfulness. And the day you accept it, this is a, and you can understand what a fool, the whole life, with the whole clan, this is what we have earned. And Mahagandhi says that is the productivity. Mahagandhi says that is the advancement, that is the creativity. Then the Buddha says, of course, that is the situation of the blind person. Instead you are telling, then you will never grab hold, you will never possess this kind of diseases, this kind of turmoils, this kind of uh, darts. And Upadana, whenever Upadana go on, Bhava Upadana Pacha Bhava, when the Upadana ceases to exist, Bhava, that becoming of that kind, is natural to ceases to exist. As far as the Bhava, then Jati, the reborn, is ceases to exist. So what we are expecting is we must have reborn without diseases. We have to be reborn without Soka Parideva Dukkha Domanasa Jaramarana. We are so worrying about the get rid of Jaramarana. We don't know it is a package. Once born, it is in the package. And if you are believing that the rebirth and the newly born baby is a, such a blessing, that means you are so happy about the death. Birth is leading definitely to the death. But have you ever seen any death certificate, uh, root cause of the death as the birth? I mean, doctor will be dismissed. Never it will come into the birth certificate, the death certificate. So such a, such a direct things. And jara, marana, soka, parideva, dukkha, domanasa. And you get as a package, as a birth. So therefore going backward. It is going up to the upadana, the clinging. And you are clinging into these kind of things, just like a dirty cloth. So therefore, uh, knowing that you can understand the moment you see the vicious cycle, uh, seeing itself is enough. Seeing itself is enough. And then you see the uh, uh, dismantling of happen. Don't rush. The only you have to do is don't grab hold these diseases and the turmoils and the darts as blessings or endowments or luxury or materiality. Then accordingly you will get the consequences. The moment you see, the greatest thing you see is what a fool am I. These are the ones we grab hold. And then exactly when such a thing happens, the Magandya says, Bhante, it's, it's a marvelous, it's a unbelievable the way you revealed it. And therefore it is like a, when I am in the blind fold that room, you are switch on the light light. And when I am bewildered in the forest, you are directing the path light. So therefore, please, please let me have become a disciple of you because I feel, I see the truth as such. Then the Buddha says, uh, usually we don't accept uh, this kind of uh, people from the outside. Those who have strong beliefs, we have to take four months probation. That is our standard rule. Then the Mahagandya says, leave aside four months, but they give me a four years of probation, still it is worth. And uh, with the due, with the due uh, rules and regulations and whatever may be, or the etiquettes, he became a disciple of the Buddha and uh, soon he preferred being solitude and go on to a solitude place and uh, live up to this uh, restraint, moral concentration and the wisdom and whatever may be a person re- renounced from the household, what, what will be his the desired object, the Mahagandhya achieved that in this, in this very life. So this is the formal ending of the Discourse, so therefore, it is a very revolutionary one. It is a evolving kind of discourse, and one episode to one episode, very dramatic, and happening ultimately, the arrogant person accepted his arrogance and accepted the Buddha, accepted the Dhamma, accepted the Sangha, and accepted the Sila. 
accepted the restraint. So the way the Buddha communicated is so bright, so short to the point, the best way of teaching on the earth. So therefore hope the endeavorance and the effort we have taken undergo to undergo this retreat will be meaningful and to put into practice taking the Magandhyata an example it is never too late once you met up with the true person the Dhamma and Sangha and the uh, moral precepts that's a, that's a shortest cut to earn the first Magapala or the Sotapatti Magapala so therefore check your balance check your uh, balance sheet and see what is lacking and there is no second person you yourself has to fulfill it and uh, that very faith that very understanding that very not entertaining doubts will make a big difference in each and everyone's life may that difference happen under your very nose and with this wish I would like to sum up the today's talk as a leather series of talk Thank you very much for listening. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. 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 Sadhu.